In this lecture, we study the Chinese postman problem. The Chinese postman problem is quite close to the traveling salesman problem, but it has some differences when compared to the TSP. Now, what is the Chinese postman problem? Now, before we formally introduce the Chinese postman problem, let us look at a simple graph and try to understand what this problem is. If So, we look at a simple graph which has 4 vertices 1, 2, 3, 4 and 4 edges 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4 and 4 to 1. Now, we know that this graph is Hamiltonian in the sense that we can have a feasible solution to the traveling salesman problem which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Starting at vertex 1, we are able to visit every other vertex once and only once and come back to the starting point. So, this has a feasible solution to the TSP. Now, can we consider another problem where we start at a vertex, we visit every edge once and only once and come back to the starting point. So, we start at vertex 1, let us say we visit this edge first then we visit this edge first, then we do another edge here and then this edge once and only once and we come back to the starting point. So, again the, the a feasible solution to the problem where we start at a vertex, visit every edge of the graph once and only once and come back to the starting point turns out to be the same solution as that of the TSP, but then we call this circuit as an Eulerian circuit. Now, let us make a small change in this graph and say that we add another edge here between 2 and 4. Now, if we want to solve the TSP or in this case to find out a Hamiltonian circuit, which means you start at a vertex, visit every other vertex once and only once and come back to the starting point. Now, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 1 is again feasible to the TSP and it is a Hamiltonian circuit. But if we try and solve the second problem for the same graph, which means we start at a particular vertex, visit all the edges once and only once and come back to the starting point. Now, we can go from 1 to 2 we can do 2 to 3, we can do 3 to 4, come back 4 to 1, which means we have not come or covered this edge. If we choose to come from 3 to 4 and then go back from 4 to 2 and then come back to 2 to 1, it means we are duplicating this twice and we have not moved into this. So, for this particular graph, we do not actually have a solution, a feasible solution where starting from a given vertex, we visit all the edges once and only once and come back to the starting point. So, the problem where if we are able to find in a graph where starting from a vertex, we visit every edge once and only once and we come back to the starting point, then such a graph is called Eulerian and this circuit is called the Eulerian circuit. Now, this graph along with this edge 2 4 is not Eulerian, whereas the original version of this graph which did not have this edge, which did not have this edge was Eulerian. So, let us keep this and let us again draw the second part of this graph where we say 1, 2, 3, 4. This graph is Eulerian as well as Hamiltonian, whereas this graph is Hamiltonian or it, it has a Hamiltonian circuit, but this is not Eulerian. So, we observe a couple of things. One, this graph is Eulerian. One of the interesting things that we have seen earlier already is that if the degree of every vertex of the graph is an even number, then that graph is Eulerian. In this case, we realize 
or observe that the degree is 2, degree is 2, but the degree is 3 and the degree is 3. So, you have some vertices that have odd degree and we already know that the number of vertices that will have odd degree is an even number. So, these two have odd degree or we can generalize and say that if a graph has vertices with odd degree, then that graph is not Eulerian. So, first and foremost given a graph like this, then we know that this graph is not Eulerian. Now, we can do one more thing, if we are still interested in getting an Eulerian circuit, then we may have to add some edges into this graph. For example, if we add one more edge here, so that we say we go from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, again we go from 4 to 2, come back from 2 to 4 and then do 4 to 1, then we have got an Eulerian circuit. So, the Eulerian circuit can be written as 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 4, 1. Now, if the graph is Eulerian, then this graph has one Eulerian circuit or a unique circuit in the sense that the distance that it has is the same and such a distance or length of such an Eulerian circuit will be equal to some of the weights of all of them. Now, in this example, this particular edge was not there in the graph and the graph was not Eulerian. So, to make this Eulerian, we have to add some edges or essentially duplicate some edges. So, a graph that is non-Eulerian can be made Eulerian by duplication of edges. So, this is the background that is required to understand the Chinese postman problem. Now, what is the Chinese postman problem? Let us go back to our discussion on this graph. Again, and let us say we also provide some distances which are associated with this as arc weights. Suppose we say that this distance is 10, this is 8, this is 12, this is 6 and this is 9. Now, the total if this graph is not Eulerian, so sum of the distances is 10 plus 8, 18 plus 12, 30, 36 plus 9, 45 and we know that this is not Eulerian because this has an odd degree of 3, this also has an odd degree of 3. So, this graph is not Eulerian. Now, in order to make this graph Eulerian, we just now said that if we can duplicate this and add another 6 more, then it becomes an Eulerian. So, 45 plus 6 is equal to 51. So, by adding some edges into a graph that is non-Eulerian, then we will be able to bring it or make it Eulerian and get a solution to this. So, automatically the question comes that if the graph is not Eulerian and we have to either add edges or duplicate edges, what is the minimum weight or minimum extra length that we add such that we are able to get an Eulerian out of this. The physical meaning or significance of this problem, which is called the Chinese postman problem comes like this. We can assume that this 1 is a post office and 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 1 and 2 to 4 are streets that a postman starting from the post office has to deliver letters. So, what the postman would ideally like to do is to start from the post office, visit each street once and only once and is able to come back to the post office. Now, that means, if this graph is Eulerian, then the corresponding Eulerian circuit will be the tour that the postman takes from the post office, visit each street once and only once and he comes back to this. Now, this is not Eulerian and therefore, we said that by adding this, we make it Eulerian. Now, if we look at this carefully, the postman will now deliver in this street 1 to 2, deliver in this street 2 to 3, deliver in this street 3 to 4, deliver in the street 4 to 2, 
come back and do a dummy which means there this particular thing the first man does not deliver anything he comes back and then delivers in 4 to 1. So, this is like the extra distance that the postman has to walk, so that the postman is able to get an Eulerian circuit out of it. So, if the given graph is not Eulerian, the problem is what is the minimum extra length that we add and from the point of view of the postman, what is the extra length the postman walks without delivering any letter such that the postman gets an Eulerian circuit out of it and comes back to the starting point. Now, this is called the Chinese postman problem, because it originated somewhere in a Chinese journal many years ago. Now, there are some interesting applications of the Chinese postman problem, even though the problem is called the Chinese postman problem and the application to postal delivery is fairly obvious. There are other applications of this problem, where this ideas can be used particularly in uh, collecting waste or garbage in streets in a community, which is quite similar to the postman going and delivering lectures or particularly in cleaning the streets, when the street is full of snow in particularly countries where it snows during certain parts of the year. So, the Chinese postman problem has such kind of applications, but largely is a problem where number one is to verify whether the graph is Eulerian and if this graph is not Eulerian what is the minimum extra weight that, that the person has to walk extra or the minimum extra weight or length that has to be added to the network, so that the resultant network becomes Eulerian. So, that is called the Chinese postman problem. Now, we will look at a slightly bigger network and then we will try and explain two algorithms, which will help us solve the Chinese postman problem, which means two algorithms that would help us identify arcs with minimum weight that have to be added to the network, so that an Eulerian circuit is obtained. Now, we, we look at a network like this. Now, this network has eight nodes and several arcs that are given here. The arc lengths are also given accordingly. So, the first thing we need to observe is whether this is Eulerian. If this is Eulerian, then the question is to find the Eulerian circuit. We have already said that if the graph is Eulerian, there is one Eulerian circuit and the weight is equal to sum of the weights of all the arcs. And if the graph is not Eulerian, then in order to make it Eulerian, we have to add some more. So, obviously, the sum of all these weights is certainly a lower bound to the total distance traveled or is a lower bound to the length of the Eulerian circuit that we wish to have. So, some of these lengths would now be 10 plus 5 15 plus 5 20, 20 plus 20 40, 55 plus 15 is 70, 70 plus 20 is 90, 120, 135, 155, 185, 205 plus 10 215 is the sum of the lengths of all this. So, 215 is a sum of all these lengths and 215 is an obvious lower bound to the length of the Eulerian. Now, we need to verify whether this graph is Eulerian. In order to do that, we try and find out the degree of every vertex. Now, the degree of this vertex is 3. So, the moment we find a vertex with odd degree, we can say that the graph is not Eulerian. Nevertheless, we find the degrees of all the vertices. So, the degree of each of these vertex, degree of this vertex is 3, there are 3 arcs, degree again is 3, degree again is 3, degree is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, degree is 3, degree is once again 3, degree is 2, 1, 2, degree is again so, out of the 8 vertices, 6 of them have odd degree. The number of vertices having odd degree is an even number. So, 6 of these vertices have odd degree, while 2 vertices have even degree. Vertex 7 and vertex 4, they, they have even degree, while the rest of them have odd degree. So, this graph is not Eulerian. 
So, one of the things we can do to get an eulerian is by arbitrarily duplicating edges in this, so that we may still get a resultant eulerian. So, let me just give an arbitrary solution or an arbitrary eulerian by duplicating edges extra, so that the resultant graph we get as eulerian. So, let us go back and do that. Let us look at this solution. So, 1 to 3, 1, 2, 3, 8, 7, 6, 4, 6, 5, 4, 5, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 8, 4, 1. Now, this looks like a fairly lengthy Eulerian circuit. Let us try and map this circuit on this. Now, what do we do? We first assume that the person goes from 1 to 2, which means we clear this edge. Then the person goes from 2 to 3, so this edge, 3 to 8, this edge, 8 to 7, this edge, 7 to 6, here, 6 to 4, here, again 4 to 6, which means we are duplicating this edge. So, here, 6 to 5, this one, 5 to 4, again this one, again duplicate this, 4 to 5, this one, 5 to 1, here, 1 to 4, we go back here, and then 4 to 2, we come here, we do 2 to 4, we duplicate, Two to four we duplicate, four to three, and then we come back again three to four, and then we go from four to eight, and then we again duplicate this to come from eight to four, and then we duplicate this again to come from four to one. So this is a solution where the the ones shown in in yellow are the arcs that have been duplicated. Now if we duplicate this many arcs we are able to get an Eulerian as we have shown, because we have already shown with the tick that every edge that is there, whether it was an original edge or whether it was a duplicate, duplicated edge, they have been now covered in the Eulerian circuit. So, when we consider this big Eulerian circuit, which means that we have to duplicate all these edges, which are shown in yellow. So, the extra distance that the person has to travel, if the person is accepting this Eulerian is given by the sum of the weights of those duplicated edges. So, and those are, there is a duplication here. So, there is a 5, there is a duplication here, there is a 15, there is a duplication here, there is a 15. So, these 3 are covered, then we do this, this and this. So, 5 plus 15 plus 15 plus 30 plus 20 plus 30. So, this is 5 plus 15 plus 15 corresponding to these 3 and then we have a 30 that is duplicated, a 20 that is duplicated and a 30 that is duplicated. So, the total extra distance that the person travels for this is given by 40. 50, 5 plus 15, 20, plus 15, 35, 65, plus 20, 85, plus 30, 115 is the extra distance this person travels and we the total distance will be 215, which is the sum of the weights plus another 115, which is equal to 340. Now, after the duplications, we can observe that this had an even degree of 3, now this has 4. This has an even degree of 3, this has 4. This has an even degree of 3, now this has 4. This has an even degree of 3, this has 4. Again, this had an even degree of 3, it has 4. This had an even degree of 3, this has 4. This 2 remains as 2. This 4, which had 6, now has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 
again an even degree. So, all the vertices have even degree. So, we have got this final. Now, for this feasible solution, we have an extra distance of 115. So, the real optimization problem there is we want to keep this 115 minimum, minimize the extra distance such that after duplication the graph continues to be Eulerian. So, what is the extra distance, minimum extra distance that the person has to travel and which are the edges corresponding to those extra distance. Now, this 115 has, has come out of a feasible solution, is it optimal? Can we bring down this 115 is the next question. This 115 being feasible actually gives us an upper bound value of 340 to the Eulerian circuit. The low 215 was a lower bound, this was a sum of the original weights of the original arcs, the graph was not Eulerian. Therefore, 215 is a lower bound to the Chinese postman length or the Eulerian length. Now, 340 is an upper bound because by duplicating some edges arbitrarily, we have now got an Eulerian circuit which is a feasible solution. So, a feasible solution to a minimization problem is an upper bound. So, we get solution equal to 340. So, the real optimization now comes in where can we bring down this 115. It is not about here we have duplicated 6 edges. It is not about minimizing the number of edges that we wish to duplicate. It is about minimizing the total distance associated with the extra edges that have to be duplicated. So, can we bring down this 115 is the optimization question. Now, one of the ways of handling this is now we look at two algorithms which actually help us reduce this 115. The first algorithm works as follows. Now, right now, let me leave out all this. Now, what we do in the first algorithm is this, whichever arc has been duplicated, the first thing we do is simply make the arc weight negative. So, this 15 becomes minus 15, this 5 becomes minus 5, this 15 becomes minus 15, this becomes minus 30, this becomes minus 20 and this becomes minus 30. So, whichever arc has been duplicated we simply make that corresponding arc weight as negative. Then we go back and identify what are called negative length cycles from this. For example, now the moment we put this, we can now go back and see 1, 2, 4, 1 that is 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 1 is a cycle. We start from 1, we go through some edges and we come back to 1. So, 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 1 is a cycle. Now, what is the total weight associated with this cycle? 10 minus 15 minus 5, so which is equal to minus 10, minus 20 plus 10 is minus 10. So, we have identified a negative cycle. Now, can we identify some other negative cycles also? We can identify a negative cycle here which is we can also identify a negative cycle 2, 3, 4, 2 is a negative cycle 2, 3, 4, 2 is a negative cycle 3, 4, 8, 3 is a negative cycle 3 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 3 is minus 50 plus 20, 2, 3, 4 2 is a negative cycle minus 45 plus 20 is minus 25, 4 8 7 6 4 is also a negative cycle, 4 8 7 6 4 is a negative cycle. Similarly, 4 5 6 4 is also a negative cycle, 4 5 6 4 is also a negative cycle. In fact, 
1 4 5 1 is also a negative cycle is also a, all these are negative cycles. Let us find out the length of each of them. We, we can even identify more negative cycles uh, than what we have shown here, but then let us look at we can take any one of the negative cycles. So, we can right now evaluate some of them and take the one that is most negative. So, if we do 2 3 4 2 we get minus 45 plus 20 which is minus 25, 3 4 8 3 is minus 30, 4 8 7 6 4 is minus 10 plus 5 minus 25. Four five six four is four five six four is minus forty five plus twenty minus twenty five one four five one is one four five one is minus fifteen and so on. Now we can take any one of them to begin with, or we can take the most negative cycle, which is the one with minus thirty and then perform some operations. So, what, what do we do? Now, take the negative cycle 3 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 3 and simply change the duplications. For example, what we are going to do now is, now 3 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 3. Now, here there is a duplication. So, bring it back, remove the duplication, remove the duplication here there is a duplication. So, remove this duplication. Now, here there is no duplication. Now, make a duplication and then wherever there is a duplication you put a negative, wherever there is no duplication you put a positive. So, we considered this 3 4 8 3 and we have a saving of 30 by considering this. Now, go back and see whether we can get one more negative cycle out of this. We said 4, 5, 6, 4 is a negative cycle, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 4 is a negative cycle, minus 45 plus 20. So, let us consider this to begin with, minus 45 plus 20. So, we get a saving of 25 out of this. Now, wherever there is a duplication, change it. So, this minus 15 is going. So, this is going to become a plus 15. This minus 30 goes. This will become a plus 30, but this 20 will now be duplicated and we will get a minus 20 here and we have made a saving of another 25. Now, let us see if there is any other negative length cycle. In fact, right now we do not need this. These have also changed. So, we do not need these degrees. Now, look at 1, 2, 4, 1 is a negative cycle. So, there is a saving of 10. Now, 2 to 4 is presently duplicated. So, change this. So, this becomes positive. Now, this changes. So, this becomes positive, while this arc gets duplicated and this becomes negative. Now, we go back and see whether we, we have any more negative length cycles. For example, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 2 is now not a negative length cycle. So, we do not consider this. 4, 8, 7, 6, 4, 4, 8, 7, 6, 4 is not a negative cycle. So, we do not consider this. 1, 4, 5, 1, 1, 4, 5, 1 is not a negative cycle. So, we do not consider this. Now, we need to check whether we can have any other negative cycle we actually realize that we do not have any other negative cycle in this. Any other cycle that we evaluate is now strictly positive in length. So, the algorithm actually stops 
when we cannot find out any more negative length cycle. So, we, we do not find any more negative length cycle. So, the savings that we have had right now is 30 plus 25, 55 plus 10, 65 which means earlier we had an extra 115, now we have a saving of 65 which means we have an extra 50, extra equal to 50 and these extras are nothing but the lengths of the duplicated edges which is 10 plus 20 plus 20. So, this is the duplicated edges are 1 to 2, 3 to 8 and 5 to 6. So, the Eulerian will now have a length of the original length was 215 plus the extra 50 now which is 265. Now, let us go back and redo the Eulerian. So, we start with 1 to 2. 2 to 3. So, let us tick this. So, we start with 1 to 2 and then we do 2 to 3 and then we do 3 to 8, then 3 to 8, then we come back 8 to 3, 3 to 4. So, 3 to 8, 8 to 3, 3 to 4, then 4 to 2 and 2 to 1. So, we are back. Then we do 1 to 4 which is here then we do 4 to 8. So, 1 to 4, we do 4 to 8, then we come back from 8 to 7, 7 to 6, 6 to 4, come back, 4 to 5, back here, 5 to 6 again and back 6 to 5 which is here and then 5 to 1. So, now this is the Eulerian with weight equal to 215 which is the original one plus 50 that is duplicated with weight equal to 265. Now, since now again you, you observe here that all those that have been duplicated are shown in yellow and wherever there is a duplication the weight is shown with a negative. So, we are not able to find a negative length cycle and therefore, the algorithm terminates here by saying that for this network, if it is enough if we duplicate this, this and this with a minimum duplicated weight of 50 and the Eulerian now has 215 plus 50 which is 265. So, this is the first algorithm that we have seen to solve the Chinese postman problem. This algorithm is very nice and efficient except that in this algorithm, we now have to find out with the starting solution of course, we need to find out given a start, this is more like an improvement algorithm. We have a starting solution and for the starting solution, we duplicated the edges and then we identified negative length cycles and then changed the duplicated edges. So, that the weight keeps reducing and therefore, we eventually minimize the total weight that has been added to this network. The only there are two aspects which are a little difficult, one of which is to find out an initial feasible solution which could be arbitrary. So, we start with an initial solution. The second is we have to evaluate all the cycles to see whether we have a negative length cycle. Now, these are the two slightly more involved procedures in the first algorithm. Now, the next is can we have a kind of a construction algorithm and not an improvement algorithm. The first one is an improvement algorithm, but it is a very intuitive algorithm to understand the principle because we are effectively trying to minimize the additional weight that goes in. So, we have an arbitrary solution with an arbitrarily large weight as we showed here and then the idea that a negative length cycle gives us a way by which we can reduce the extra weight that goes into this network. So, it is a very intuitive algorithm, but it the two aspects of it which are little cumbersome which is to get a feasible solution and then to have to, to find out what are all the cycles and then evaluate every cycle to check whether it is a negative length cycle. So, the next question is can we have a construction algorithm 
to solve this problem, which is different from the one that we have right now seen. Now, to do that, let us go back to the same network. Now, let us for a moment leave out the duplicated edges here. This is the original network with positive numbers here. We also saw that this is not Eulerian because the degree of all the vertices are not even. We said this has a degree of 2, this has a degree of 6, while the rest of them have degree of 3 and, and have odd degree. So, this has a degree of 3, this has a degree of 3, 3, 3, 3 and so on. So, the first thing that we do is we also know that the number of vertices that have odd degree is an even number, we know that. So, we first get a sub matrix out of this, which are all the vertices that have odd degree. So, the vertices that have odd degree are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 and 8. So, the odd degree vertices are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 and 8. So, we construct a matrix which has 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 and 8. Now, we find out a, a distance matrix that connects these vertices to these vertices such that we find the shortest distance. For example, 1 to 1 is dash, 1 to 2 is 10, from this 1 to 2 is 10 and from this 1 to 2 is 10, 1 to 3 it is not directly connected, but we can always use the Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest distance from 1 to 3. In the Chinese postman problem, we can conveniently assume that all these arc weights are greater than or equal to 0 because in principle they represent distances that the postman has to travel. So, since all these weights are greater than or equal to 0, Dijkstra's algorithm can be used to get the shortest path or shortest distance from 1 to 3. Otherwise, the algorithm has to be modified if you have negative lengths coming in here. Remember, the original graph will have all distances or weights greater than or equal to 0 only when we are considering duplications, we converted some of them to negative and that negatives that we used were only helpful to us in identifying negative length cycles and they are not the correct representations of the edge weights. So, all the edge weights are greater than or equal to 0, we can use a Dijkstra's algorithm to get it. So, 1 to 3, the shortest distance will be 30, which we keep here as 30. 1 to 5 is again is 5 from this graph, it is 5. Now, 1 to 6 is not directly connected. So, 1 to 6 is 5 plus 20, 25. So, from the Dijkstra's algorithm, we will realize that is the smallest. Otherwise, you could do 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6 or 1 to 4, 4 to 6 and so on, but 5 plus 20, 25 is the smallest and like this we can complete this graph. Again 1 to 8, we can find the shortest path which is 5 plus 20, 25 and so on. So, wherever i to j is not directly connected, you can solve the Dijkstra's algorithm to get the shortest distance from i to j. So, when that is done, then the matrix will look like this, have a twenty. 15, 35, 
Now, this represents the shortest distance. So, obviously, to construct this matrix, it will take some time, but then we realize that the number of vertices with odd degree is even and it is at most n, which is the number of vertices in this graph, it is at most n. Therefore, this will have a size of n by n. Now, when this has a size of n by n, this is symmetric. Therefore, it is enough to do n c 2 computations and each of these n c 2 computations is a single pass of the Dijkstra's algorithm and therefore, the effort taken to create this is still polynomial. So, it is a little cumbersome if one does it by hand, but then one can always use a, a software or a computer program or a solver to get the shortest path from this i to j. So, this can be constructed. Now, once this is constructed, we now try to again find out a minimum weighted matching. Now, we have already seen this minimum weighted matching in the earlier lecture, when we looked at a heuristic solution to the TSP that involved minimum weighted matching. Now, we know that this, this is always an even number, because this represents the number of vertices in the graph, which has an odd degree. Therefore, this is always an even number. So, when this is an even number, now here we have 6, 6 number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 8, we have 6 vertices. Now, from 6 vertices, we get a matching of 3 edges. For example, we are looking at 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8. Now, 1 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8 is a matching. It is a matching because it comprises of 3 edges 1 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8. It comprises of 3 edges which covers all the 6 vertices, which means these 3 edges do not share a common vertex. So, this is a matching, a, a matching that comes out of these vertices. Another example of a matching could be 1, 3, 2, 6, 5, 8 is another example of a matching. A third example could be 1, 8, 2, 5, 3, 6 and so on. So, we could have several matchings like this. Now, we try to find out a weight associated with each of these matchings. Now, this matching will have a weight 1 to 2, 3 to 5, 10 plus 35, 45 plus 6 to 8, 45 plus 5, 50 plus 20. 70. Now, this matching will have 1 to 3 is 30 plus 35 65, 65 plus 35 is 100. This matching will have 25 plus 15 40 plus 20 60. We could think of another matching for example, 1 to 2, 5 to 6 and 3 to 8 as another matching that comes out. That would give us 10, 1 to 2 is 10, 5 to 6 is 10 plus 35 is 40, 5 to 6 is 10 plus 20, 30, 30 plus 20, 50 and so on. Here, I have not shown exhaustively what are all the possible matches, but there are several possibilities, but then the problem is to find out the minimum weighted matching. Now, if there are 6 vertices, each of these is a matching, there are many more that are not shown here. Now, each one as I described earlier is a matching, because it has all the 6 vertices, 3 edges with no edge having any common vertex. So, each of these is a matching and there are several more. So, there are algorithms with which we can find out the minimum weighted matching given a network like this. This is somewhat similar to the assignment problem, but it is not exactly the assignment problem. It is somewhat similar to 
the assignment problem. Because an important condition for a matching is that this has to be 2, 1 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8. For example, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8 cannot be something like a matching. So, this is somewhat closer to the assignment problem, but it is actually different from that. So, some algorithms are available to find out the minimum weighted matching given a graph like this and we can show that the best one is actually this with weight equal to 50. Now, when the best one has weight equal to 50, all we need to do is to duplicate that. So, we duplicate 1 to 2, 3 to 8 and 5 to 6 and when we do that and we get the Eulerian. So, once we get the Eulerian, this is the Eulerian, already we have seen it with the earlier algorithm. So, this is the Eulerian. So, the extra weight that we have added is actually from here. So, we get 215 plus 50 which is 265. One should also keep in mind that in this example 1 to 2, 5 to 6, 3 to 8, 1 to 2, 5 to 6 and 3 to 8 happen to be direct edges that are available 1 to 3, 1 to 2, 5 to 6, 3 to 8 happen to be direct edges that are available. Just in case something like 1 to 3 happens to be in the solution, then it, it means we add 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 because 1 to 3 is got as a shortest distance which means 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. So, depending on what we get from this, we have to go back and see if it is a direct edge we will have a direct duplication. If it is a path which has more than one edge, then all those edges will have to be duplicated. Now, for this once we solve the minimum weighted matching problem out of all the vertices that have odd degree and then superimpose the minimum weight matching onto the Eulerian, then we get the optimal solution to the Chinese postman problem. So, what we have seen are two algorithms. The first one that we saw was an improvement algorithm. We started with an arbitrary Eulerian circuit by duplicating edges arbitrarily and then wherever there was a duplication we added a negative and then we tried to find out negative length arcs and we, we wherever we found a negative length arc we switched the positives became negatives the negatives became positive and the net was a gain and then we did this such that there are no more negative arcs in the solution. Now, that is a very intuitive algorithm which is based on the principle that we want to minimize the extra distance. The other one is a construction algorithm where we identify those vertices that have hot degree, create a matrix of distances obtained by solving a shortest path problem and from that we solve a minimum weighted matching problem and then get this matching and superimpose this matching on to the given Eulerian. So, that we now find out the extra length or extra distance this person has to travel. So, this brings to the end of our discussion on the Chinese postman problem and then we will look at yet another problem which is quite similar to the TSP and that is called the vehicle routing problem. called the vehicle routing problem. So, let us describe the vehicle routing problem first. The vehicle routing problems are very common and they are very well known. The vehicle routing problem happens like this. Now, you may consider a central point which could be a school where there are several school buses. These buses go and pick up people from different places. For example, there could be a bus that goes here and comes back, there could be another bus that goes here, picks up people and comes back. This could be a supermarket where there are vehicles that deliver goods to people and so on. So, wherever there is a pickup and delivery, you have what is called a vehicle routing problem. Now, for the standard notation, the central place from which the vehicles go is called a depot. A vehicle routing problem 
ordinarily means that there is a depot, there are at least two vehicles. Now, each vehicle will have its own specified route. So, there is a depot and there are vehicles. Usually, the vehicle is greater than or equal to 2. The reason being, if there is only one vehicle, if, if, if there is only one vehicle, then this vehicle will come here, it will go here and then it will come back, then it becomes a travelling salesman problem. So, when we have one vehicle, the problem becomes a TSP, the problem becomes a vehicle routing problem, it is called a vehicle routing problem, when there are more than one vehicle, at least two or more vehicles. Now, there are several things in a vehicle routing problem. There could be a single depot vehicle routing problem or there could be multiple depot vehicle routing problem. So, you could have multiple depots. Now, there could be another depot and there are customers like this, whereas a vehicle could start from this depot, meet the requirements of these customers and come back. Now, in this lecture series, we will look only at the single depot vehicle routing problem and we are not going to look at the multiple depot vehicle routing problem. Now, there are a couple of other issues. Now, there is a depot, there are a set of vehicles. Now, there are normally three problems that are associated with vehicle routing. Now, let us assume that we have four vehicles. Now, there could be a case where I have a depot, I have different sets of customers who say have to be picked up. Then we would say that I wish to use all the vehicles. So, there is a problem where you could say I want to use all the vehicles and send these vehicles to pick up these people and then we want to find out the route in such a manner that the total distance travelled is minimized. Now, the all vehicles problem is also important because particularly say in, in office pickup or school pickup kind of problems, where say the office is, is going to begin at 9 o'clock. So, the more vehicles we have, the more vehicles we send, it becomes easier for the people to come. So, the time that is spent by the person who is farthest away from the office would be minimized if we have more and more vehicles. So, we get into a problem where we have certain number of vehicles, we wish to use all the vehicles. So, there is a problem of that type. Then there are second type of problem where we want to use the minimum number of vehicles that are required. Now, this comes in from the moment we say minimum number of vehicles required, we could say 2 or we could say that there is a vehicle capacity and there is an individual requirement at each of these customers. Now, rather than describe the pickup problem, we may assume that this, this problem is like a supermarket, where these customers have ordered something from the supermarket. Therefore, things have to be dropped or things have to be delivered to the house of each of these customers. So, each van or vehicle that goes from this depot has a certain capacity and there is a requirement. So, based on the capacity of the vehicle and the requirement, we can find out the minimum number of vehicles that are actually required and then we can use that. So, we have problems of this type. Ordinarily, when we look at this problem, we assume capacity. There is a third one, where we would say use minimum number of vehicles such that the total distance is minimized. In the uncapacitated case, we could even do this, total distance is minimized. Now, the third is use a given number of vehicles. I may have four vehicles, but today I would like to use only three vehicles. So, we may say, now give a, give a solution where only 
three vehicles are being used. So, we have these kind of categories, there is capacity. So, we would say we want to use all vehicles is one type of a problem, use minimum number of vehicles is another type of a problem, use minimum number of vehicles such that the total distance is minimized is another and use a given number of vehicles which is also there. So, there are vehicle routing problems where there is capacity of the vehicle and the demand in each of these and there are problems where we do not explicitly consider the capacity. Now, there are other cases in the vehicle routing, there are things like pick up and drop problem. For example, a vehicle will go, it may drop something, it may pick up something and then it can move. Typically, mail motor problems sometimes do that. The mail motor van will go, it will go to the post office, it will drop a certain set of letters that have come into the post office and then simultaneously it will also pick up letters that come from the post office which have to be taken to the central office. Now, in, we do not consider such problems in our discussion right now. So, we are going to look at only these types of problems, a single depot vehicle routing problem and we would try to see as much of these as we can consider. Now, coming back again to the single depot vehicle routing problem, if we assume a single depot and then say we call these people as customers 5, 6, 7, 8 and if we do not consider capacities and if we consider two vehicles, then we might say the first vehicle will go from the depot to 1, 2, 3, 4 and back to the depot. The second vehicle will do depot 5, 6, 7, 8 and depot. It, this is a feasible solution to the vehicle routing problem. This is usually described as D 1, 2, 3, 4 D and D 5, 6, 7, 8 D. Now, the D simply means it, a vehicle starts from a depot, completes this round and comes back this depot. Now, there are two aspects to this feasible solution. Now, if we, if we look at the solution, we now first say that this goes from this goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, this covers 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, that 1, 2, 3, 4 is covered in the order 1, 2, 3, 4, this is covered in the order 5, 6, 7, 8. So, there is a grouping problem, there is a routing problem and then we get the vehicle routing problem. We will see more aspects of the VRP in the next lecture.